Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to do some shorts from scratch. I'm going to show you how to make your own pattern based off your measurements and then just continue into how to sew the thing together. So first of all, I'll do this in two steps. Here are the materials you'll need to make your pattern, a um, piece of newspaper or paper, a fat marker, your measurements, your paper scissors, paper scissors, maybe a pen, maybe, I don't know, um, a ruler. I like the yardsticks just because if I need to make a long line, it's just, I, it's easier to just do it all in one shot and your measuring tape. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, and just kind of a tip because this is like a really big thing with seamstress, stream sisses, stream sissi, I don't even know what the, how you would pluralize that, but your paper scissors is very important when you're doing pattern work, cutting paper, cutting fabric, you don't have you have two sets of scissors. You have your fabric scissors and then you have your paper scissors, which is what I kind of emphasize right now when I'm talking about the materials that we need when we're gonna make our pattern. So just make sure you have your paper scissors and your, your fabric scissors separate because if you start cutting your paper with your fabric scissors, they're just gonna dull out faster and it just gets more annoying as you go through projects because your scissors aren't cutting as well. And that's a waste of time and it's very frustrating um, you know, while you're making your projects. And then the same thing, you know, if you have paper scissors and you're using it on fabric, it's not going to cut as well. And it, it's just a waste of, t it's a time thing. Um, you know, you waste more money going to get your scissors sharpened more frequently if you're flip-flopping between paper and, and fabric. So just try not to do that. Have your crappy scissors for your paper and your really, really good scissors only for fabric. And it'll work out so much better for you. Okay, so enough of that. Back okay. to the project. So let's get started. So basically what I like to do with my newspaper is I like to do two extensions so that way I just have a really big piece of paper and I don't have to worry about adding on extensions as I'm doing the pattern. So basically we're going to have four pieces that make up your shorts. So whatever measurement you have, so let's say her waist is 36, we're going to divide that by four. So 36 divided by four is nine. So the front part of the pants is going to be nine. That's this one piece of the pattern. Of course, the, the, fir the front pattern you're going to cut two and the back pattern you're going to cut two. So there's your four. So basically what when you're making patterns is you start off with like a squarish rectangle shape or whatever and you basically just start shaping it and tapering off things and blending them and then eventually you end up with a pattern piece as pants or shorts. So since our waist measurement is nine, I'm gonna start here. Mm, I'm gonna start at this line where these apples are. That's because there's already a nice little line that they printed for me. So this will be my starting point. I'll just make like a, a 90 degree angle. So you can see where my starting point is over here and I'll come to number nine. And then of course, when we go to cut our patterns, we're going to add our seam allowance, which in this case, I'll do 5 8 seam allowance. So from here to here is our nine inches. And with my yardstick, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a big line. And this, this will be the waistline for the front part of the pattern. And then I'm just gonna make a line towards the end here because her the length of her shorts is 15 inches. So from the waistline to here is 15 inches. So I'm gonna make a line. Again, I'll try and make it as fat as possible with this marker so you can see it on this really, really busy, oops, let me do it over here. Sorry, this is where the, the line ended for the So this is my waistline divided by four, nine, and then my 15 inches down. So at the bottom here, I'm going to just make a straight line so I can cut off all this excess. 
because I'm not going to need it. Okay, so I'm just going to make a line. And then with my paper pattern scissors, I'm just going to cut all this off. Like I said, I'm not going to need it. So now I have, a, my pattern is getting smaller and smaller. Same thing with here. Here's my waistline. I'm just going to cut this excess part off now. So now here's, here's the length of her pattern. From here to here is 15 inches, okay? So let's go ahead and find our hip line. So her hip line is 44 and a half inches, and we're going to divide that by four for this pattern. So 44 and a half divided by four is 11.12. So where am I? Okay, so from the waistline, what I always like to do is from there, I go down seven inches, and that'll be my hip line. And that's where I measure out my 11.12 inches. So let me, so here's the beginning of my waistline. So it's coming down this way. So I'm just gonna line it up, line it up with my hip line. So I'm, since my yardstick isn't like by the centimeter or whatever, I'm just gonna do it, the line at, or the marking at 11 and a quarter. So all that excess can be fixed when I start sewing it and I have my fittings. But for now, that just makes it easier for me because I can't eyeball 0.12 with this big fat yardstick. So that'll do here. And then I'll just make this line right here. Okay. And then I'll color this in. So you can see that from here to here, this, this whole line, this section is the hip line. So if you can see right here is where the edge of the waistline is and here is the point of the hip line. So I'm just going to real quick make a, a diagonal line to connect them, kind of like connecting the dots and then a line down, okay? So obviously the hips are not pointy like this. Technically, if you were doing like this weird structural pieced shorts and you wanted pointy hips, you totally could. That's why fashion is awesome. You can do whatever you want. But in this case, these are gonna be like more normal type shorts. So with this harsh point right here, I'm just gonna kind of blend out and even slightly curve the end in where the leg goes. I'm just going to blend this a little bit and curve it in to get rid of that really hard point because we are not born, born with pointy hips. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and chop off all this excess. So as you can see, I kind of came in a little bit on a curve. And that's the side of my leg for the shorts. Now that we have the right side down, let's go into the center front or the left side of this pattern and let's go ahead and do our crotch. So her crotch is 30 inches. So from here to here, I'll do 12. Make my marking at my 12 inches. And right here, this is the, the crotch line. Okay, so if you're staying with me here, we're about to combine and merge the crotch line up to the waistline. So from here to here is not my nine inches. Remember, my nine inch line is right here and it goes all the way back here. So I have this excess piece right here. And here's my crotch line down here. Okay, you can see that. So I'm going to eyeball this because I do this all the time. But if you are not comfortable with merging 
your beginning point of your center front waistline to the crotch line. You can get a pair of your pants and fold it in half and pull out the crotch and kind of lay it down and use that as a guide for your curve. But in this case, I'm just going to follow my line here. So I'm gonna get this point right here on my crotch and I'm just going to curve it up to this line. So see, I have now a curve, a line that curves like that. So if you can see, that's, that's the crotch. So I'm gonna cut this out because I don't need this space anymore, this negative space that doesn't, okay? So right here, this is the front part of your pants. I'm just gonna double check the pattern again really quick to make sure that all my measurements are accurate. So her waistline is 36, so 36 divided by four is nine. Okay, so that measures out to nine. The length of her shorts is 15. Okay, I'm off about a quarter of an inch here, but that's okay, you know what, I'll just leave it because when you do the fittings, if she wants it shorter, I can totally take it in, but I can't make things longer. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. That won't make too much of a difference. And then um, double check the crotch. So I did this at 12, so here's my 12 marking, that's good. And then her waist is 44 and a half. So 44 and a half divided by four is 11.12. Which here, remember I said, cause I can't get an accurate 0.12 measurement with my, um, me, like I don't have a millimeter or centimeter stick or whatever. So I can't m mark out that, that accurate point. So I just have the line here on 11 and a quarter. And then of course I'll just fix that excess when I have the fitting with that girl. So this is gonna be our front piece. And in case you forget our front piece, we cut two. I don't know if anyone has noticed this problem when they wear pants, but a lot of the times when you wear your pants, the booty will lift up the back part. And so you'll have all this excess fabric in the front and you pull it up and so you're, you're waist it goes all the way up your waist so it's kind of like sanded so the front is higher than the back and it looks really weird and it looks really dorky because it like you know you have all this excess fabric and your natural instinct is to pull it up and you're giving yourself like camel toe or like moose knuckle action and that's not cool at all so what i'm going to do since i have this flat line here for the waistline and i suggest you do this too I'm gonna go down, now in fittings, this number can change, but just for now, I'm gonna go down about an inch. So here's my inch line right here. And from this point to this point, I'm just gonna blend it upward. So I'm just gonna do that. So it does this, because I personally really like when the back waistband of my shorts or pants is properly aligned to the front and I don't have a bunch of extra fabric in the front pulling up and it gives you like super dorky crotch action with that. So I'm just gonna cut right on the point. So with this curve that you make to give the front a little, make it a little bit more shorter as I was explaining because the butt lifts the back part of the, the shorts and it's better to have the front shorter than the back. Um, with this curve that I made, since this is gonna be the center front, what you're gonna have to do also, once once you make this curve, because it's easier to blend it out, try and blend this back out, uh, just on this side, not, not this side, but bring it back to less, to less of a, <clears throat> less of a curve. So instead of being super pointy up here, just try, after you cut this part out, blend it back down to a, like a straight line kind of, and then this is higher at this point. Okay, that's, that's just my tip for that. That's what I like to do. Like I said, just because I 
when it when it's all one length it just irritates me and you'll see this later I'll see if the girl will will be cool with me taping her while I I fit this and then I can show you why why I do this if you're still kind of confused on what that this is for so just remember this tip so I just wanted to make a note on the crotch part When you're doing the crotch, in her case, hers is 30 inches. So when you make your, your crotch line down, in her case, I needed to make it as close to 15 as possible to, to have it fit on her. So I added a small extension and then I tapered it back down to where the straight line was here because originally the paper went like that but I needed this extra, what is this, inch right here, this little, this little part right here, I needed the extra inch to get closer to 15 on my curve. So I just added that little extension and then I tapered it back down to where this line was. So this is what the front shorts are going to look like. And basically for the back, it's gonna be the same pattern, except you're not gonna add in this curve here. Just you can just do like a straight line so you can put this on another piece of paper to draw out your back pattern and again you're going to cut two of them and you're just going to have a straight line for the waistband part because when you when I have my fitting she's going to try it on it's going to be a little bit of excess in the back and I'm going to end up doing darts I'd like to do darts when I do the fitting I mean this is how I do things again it's like completely unorthodox it doesn't follow what probably a degree holding teacher of sewing might show you but this is basically the pattern so on the crotch line see when I did it I measured 12 inches and then when you actually go out to measure what it really is from here like if you follow the curve with your measuring tape and always double check your your final pattern before you start cutting the fabric to make sure all the measurements are right so here I'm at about 13 inches. So I added in this extra here, which in actuality it's about an inch and a quarter. So when I follow the 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 true the, with the little extension that I put in, I get to 14, 14 and a quarter, which I can just extend up a little bit. And then of course the back pattern we cut two, the front we cut two, and then at that point I will show you guys how to put together your shorts.